Good morning. This is Ray Cameron. I'm with Extivia. I'm here with Jack Dotson, also from Extivia, and Paul Reston from IBM. We'll introduce him in just a moment. We're here for the Big Data Without Big Security Challenges, an overview of IBM Infosphere Guardian. Uh, we're glad you could join us today. Uh, we here at Extivia, are, uh, we offer a variety of enterprise technology solutions and services, which include business intelligence and data warehousing, portal development, data management, and application development. You can find out more about us at extivia.com, which I'm assuming most of you have been to uh, um, leading up to the webinar. Our webinar today will consist of a 30 to 40 minute presentation from Paul, followed by a discussion and a time for questions. Uh, we'd love for you to submit any questions you have. You can do that at any time during the webinar. We'll monitor those and, and uh, address those uh, after the, the first part of the presentation. And uh, I'm uh, thrilled to be able to introduce to you uh, Paul Reston. He's the North American Business Unit Executive for IBM Guardian. And uh, we're, we're excited about the opportunity to partner with him today in this webinar. And we're eager to hear from him and, and uh, assure, uh, are sure that uh, you, you join us in that. So Paul, thanks for joining us today and bringing this presentation to us. Thanks very much, Ray. Good morning, and uh, I wish everybody a uh, good morning that's uh, joining us on the, on the webinar today. It's, it's uh, certainly my pleasure uh, to be uh, speaking on behalf of IBM and Guardian, but certainly uh, on behalf of our uh, trusted partner, Extivia, here. Uh, it's a pleasure to get the opportunity, and from what I understand, we have a pretty uh, a diverse uh, audience and in terms of vertical markets represented and organizations represented. So uh, in this morning's discussion, I hope to be able to uh, kind of bridge the gap uh, between vertical mar markets as it relates to uh, Info InfoSphere Guardian and also give you first a overview um, of the uh, marketplace, basically, that we're going to be speaking about today. But in, in addition, uh, some specifics about uh, the problem that uh, Guardian solves uh, in, in your environment and in your organization. Uh, and, um, and basically uh, uh, the business value that's behind Guardian as well. Uh, in addition, we will be uh, speaking specifically about Guardian version 9. We're in our ninth major release of, of Guardian. Uh, and that uh, has as a key component of it uh, support for, for big uh, data environments, which of course uh, uh, is a key emphasis in your marketplace potentially uh, if you're an organization of significant size, but certainly uh, in uh, IBM's uh, NXTVS world as well. So uh, with that, uh, uh, we'll begin our discussion. Um, in in uh, uh, the, um, as we look at slide number two here, the agenda basically is, uh, as I mentioned a minute ago, I'll be talking about the Guardian Value Prop, uh, getting a little bit more detail about the functionality, and of course, um, in addition, uh, We've got three use cases for different vertical markets that uh, we'll talk to. And then at the end, we'll be happy to have an open discussion with some uh, uh, questions and answers. And what, what I hope you do today is able to uh, walk away with uh, two key takeaways. Uh, and that is, number one, the protection of data, especially at the source, i.e. the database, is really no longer optional. Uh, and from a compliance perspective, as a matter of fact, it's many times mandated. So, uh, and number two, obviously, is that uh, the Guardian solution uh, is the leader in data protection uh, and synergizes with um, your environment, uh, some tools that you may have in place currently from a security um, and data security perspective. And number three, obviously, uh, the integration and the synergies within the rest of the IBM uh, security portfolio as well. So uh, we hope to accomplish all of that uh, in the next little bit. Of course, this is uh, my favorite subject, all about me, uh, your speaker, but uh, uh, to uh, just set the context with uh, my experience, I think uh, the most important part uh, of how this relates to you that are joining us this morning is that uh, for the past eight, uh, actually it's nine years now, um, I've been with Guardian uh, and I was uh, an executive with Guardian prior to the acquisition and joined Guardian uh, when it was a relatively small organization. So uh, for for the most part, most of our significant um, 
uh, presence in the marketplace and customer success uh, I've uh, been a part of and very, very familiar with uh, the uh, 600 or so customers that use uh, Guardian across the world. So uh, it really, that's only the key message. That's the only key message. So uh, I love this uh, slide. I hope you do too. Uh, it's, a, it's a cartoon, but basically read the caption. Uh, and this, in a nutshell, uh, represents how Guardian can help in, in your environment. Uh, <laughs> he's, he's robbing the bank and the teller tells him, you know, you can do this just as easily on, online. And the key uh, aspect of this is that criminals, the bad guys, are really adopting and have done quite a nice job of adopting to a new era of computing. And how so? Well, uh, I'd like to point you to the next slide, but specifically uh, first to the bottom of this slide, uh, Willie Sutton, the famous bank robber uh, that you can see is a wanted poster there in the bottom. He had two uh, really significant quotes that still permeate in the marketplace today. Uh, his first was, go where the money is and go there often. And his second, of course, uh, it's not depicted on this slide, is when he was interviewed by the press on his way out of a courtroom one time or a jail cell one time, he was asked, why do you rob banks? It's a pretty simple question to answer. He said, uh, that's because that's where the money is. So uh, as criminals and uh, nefarious activities center around databases, and you hear um, a lot about data breaches uh, and stolen records and stolen laptops uh, and uh, USB um, thumb drives that are uh, filtered with lots of customer information and tape drives that fall off trucks and so forth. I think the important thing that uh, you need to know is that databases are a primary source of breach data. And that's not us, uh, IBM's viewpoint or Xtivia's viewpoint that this. This is actually a validated in the marketplace by the Verizon Business uh, um, Services uh, Consulting Organization. Uh, and in the bottom of this slide uh, is the link uh, to their annual report. They do extensive re research all of the time. And uh, one thing that we've noted in that research continuously is the increase in the number of records breached, number one, and the increase in the percentage that's attributed to database server breaches. And you can see um, all of the sources of breach data represent 7% of the total breaches. Database servers represent 92% of the breached records, 92%. And why? Because that's where the money is. Uh, but these servers contain your client's most valuable information, right? Financial records, customer information, credit card account records, all kinds of personally identifiable information. I heard a, uh, a black hat guy at a conference one time talking about the mosaic of information uh, that they're able to piece together in database services, uh, servers many times. And that mosaic many times, uh, the the compilation of that mosaic is a um, identity many times, or at least enough uh, to uh, duplicate credit cards or, or duplicate uh, financial information and take it to market because that is indeed what has value. Uh, and of course, in healthcare, it's patient records. Uh, and of course, the, uh, the, the, in many cases, believe it or not, uh, despite the protection strategy that may be in place, uh, it is easy to access, uh, and there are high volumes of it. And, and um, as you know, with the growth of data in your environment, um, that is only validated even more and makes the protection strategy that you employ all the more imperative. And of course, this uh, kind of is a, a culture shift. And when, when I first started uh, in working with the Guardian Solution uh, nine years ago, there was a lot of emphasis on perimeter security and, um, and the requirements around perimeter security and building a wall uh, to, in order to protect yourself uh, from attack. And what has happened and what has transpired because the attacks, especially centered on the databases, still occurred many times despite a great uh, protection strategy uh, around the perimeter um, is that companies more and more um, are understanding Number one, 
the necessity to protect their data uh, due to the consumerization of information technology, data being available many times everywhere, and the sophistication of attacks. And, and so the shift has been to a more logical approach to perimeter security, including uh, protection of the key assets at the database level. And this slide kind of depicts that, and hence uh, the, the growth in the data security marketplace and the fact that more and more organizations of any size uh, are employing a strategy in order to protect their data. A, either because they want to, B, either they're, because they're mandated by it, or C, many times, and unfortunately, uh, they may be reacting to something, uh, either a failed audit or uh, a breach uh, or something along those lines. So. The interesting thing, when a compromise does occur, uh, and uh, again, you saw the previous slide that talked about the number of attacks uh, and the quantity of those on database servers, uh, the, the real uh, problematic part of that as well is, uh, if you look at this slide specifically around the uh, red block, is that uh, in many cases, from the initial compromise, i.e., somebody is able to obtain records nefariously from that database server uh, for whatever reason and by any uh, number of methodologies. If you, if you look at the top columns, days, weeks, months, and years, and those in that red block initial compromise to discovery of it by that organization, Sometimes it takes days in 13% of the cases, but if you look at the key one, the big red one, many times it takes months in order to uncover and discover what has happened. Uh, and then, again, it takes a long time from that discovery to the containment and to the restoration. So in and of itself, those charts, uh, those that within that red block uh, is, a, is a huge cause for concern. And there's been several cases that are public cases that you've read about in the news, uh, seen the headlines about, uh, that involve companies as large as TJX or Heartland Data Systems, where those compromises went on for months at a time, uh, and in some cases, uh, you know, years, uh, and uh, these nefarious uh, bad guys going in and out of databases, stealing records, compromising information, uh, and taking it to market. Um, and the remediation of that takes a long time. It's very, very costly uh, in many regards, uh, both from a actual cost, the potential for fines from government organizations, and the damage in many cases to the brand um, because of the publicity that surrounds it. And of course, now because of that fact, and starting in the United States with uh, Sarbanes-Oxley, uh, several years ago, which really started as a result of uh, altered data in some uh, very large uh, organizations that were uh, public companies. Uh, and it, there's been a, a proliferation. This chart depicts worldwide, but little right-hand corner is really what we're focused on today, uh, which is um, uh, the uh, compliance and regulations that have been put forth and mandated uh, in North America, we talk about Sarbanes-Oxley, you know, we talk about a PCI and STIG, and SCAP, but, but, and that's at a federal uh, or a, uh, a big picture level uh, that are mandates. But there's also mandates um, in vertical marketplaces such as HIPAA, HIPAA High Tech, for example, and more and more we see that regulation go down to the state level in the United States. Uh, recently, Massachusetts uh, filed the Data Protection Act, or two years ago actually, passed that law, uh, and since then um, has uh, added some additional teeth to that law. Uh, and there's been a lot of publicity on the East Coast about that. Uh, and in the West Coast, California was an early adopter. And as of last count, I think it's 37 states have, at some level, some kind of mandate on uh, data protection uh, as a requirement. Uh, by law. We try to move forward. So let's, uh, sorry about that, a little bit locked up here on my uh, laptop, but uh, so let's talk as a, as a next step about InfoSphere Guardian 
and the in-depth data protection that uh, Guardian can provide. Uh, we talked about the, the why and what's going on both in the marketplace uh, with, the, with the bad guys and sometimes with insiders uh, compromising uh, records. And let's talk about the, the solution that uh, can help you uh, in that regard, and that's InfoSphere Guardian. So the value proposition is actually quite simple. Uh, and what Guardian does is monitors access to databases, including data warehouse and big data environments and file shares to do three major tenets. And number one is prevent data breaches, and that's disclosure for leakage of sensitive data and or records uh, from the database. Number two is ensures the integrity of that sensitive data. So it prevents unauthorized changes to the data, the database structures, files, uh, configuration files, and the logs, but also in, in, of more and more importance, especially of late, is that it reduces the cost of compliance. Well, how, does it, does it, how does it do that? We'll talk about how, uh, more specifically in a, in a couple of seconds, but by automating and centralizing controls uh, and utilizing the tools that are in the work, in, in the uh, solution, including the policy building, the uh, uh, the workflow that's inherent and actually the tools that's, that are uh, part of the Guardian solution. Uh, it operates in heterogeneous environments and simplifies, number one, uh, the whole process, and number two, uh, the audit review process and creates what was, in many cases, a manual review process uh, to an automated process. And, and, and to drill down in those tenants, we'll do that in just a, a few minutes, but it's very important uh, that that um, you understand that the the solution is in place, but it coupled with the reduction in cost uh, of, of compliance that you may be experience, uh, experiencing in your environment. So many customers, and you may be doing that uh, today uh, in government organizations, um, across many uh, vertical markets and uh, database environments do have a strategy in place today. And, and many times what we find is they're homegrown. Uh, and because they're homegrown, they're costly and sometimes ineffective. And let me tell you why. Most of the time, these homegrown solutions revolve around turning on native logging on the database servers, which in and of itself uh, presents a uh, high usage of those database servers and or a resource drain, i.e. adding additional cost because you're um, effectively using capacity on your servers uh, to generate your, your logs. Uh, so if you look at the left hand side of this chart uh, with your native database logging turned on, organizations, and you may be doing this today, use the scripts uh, in the uh, scrape and parse the data, or maybe they buy a uh, application that will write on top of those logs to help uh, parse the data, and they move it to a uh, central uh, repository. From there, they create reports, and uh, many times uh, those are manual reports, and and they correlate and manually look through those reports, looking for anything that may be misfit and nefarious or a problem uh, that they consider a problem, and after their manual review, uh, they'll probably do some level of uh, remediation or, or reaction. Uh, so what's wrong with that? Well, in, in most cases, there's really nothing wrong with it other than uh, it is a very costly approach, first of all. And secondly, many times it is nowhere near uh, real time. And the remediation, uh, the uncovery of, of an event and the remediation of it and reaction to it many times is days later. Uh, and sometimes, I hate to say it, it might be too late. So uh, there's a significant labor cost. And a lot of times what happens, uh, it, because of the manual process to review what's going on from the database log perspective, uh, it's um, customers either get an audit point when their database environment gets audited by their auditor, uh, or they fail an audit uh, with lax controls around the databases. Uh, it really doesn't enable you to have uh, in, uh, consistent policies across the uh, enterprise. And again, it's not real time. And I always like to cite this example. It's, this goes back about eight years ago, seven years ago, with an organization in the south 
a health care organization uh, that had exactly this process in place. Uh, and they had an IT auditor who sat in a cube with these reams of printouts uh, in an architect's desk with a magnifying uh, glass on it. Uh, and at the end of the week, he would go through the logs with yellow sticky notes uh, and add those sticky notes when he, he thought he saw something that was suspicious. And then when he got a chance, he'd go back and try to correlate through those yellow sticky notes what had happened manually. And by the time end to end, there was an event of some kind that needed an investigation or a problem. Many times it was weeks later. And again, they admitted it uh, back then it was too late. Uh, and after a uh, significant data breach, uh, they chose uh, a guardian solution to implement. So, uh, and so there in and of itself is a great real life case example of, uh, of many times what's uh, inconsistent or problematic about a, a homegrown uh, solution relying on native logging. So, what does InfoSphere Guardian do for you? So, the, the, the the key to this slide is real-time data activity monitoring for security and compliance. That's what I've listed right at the top. So the continuously uh, policy-based uh, of all your traffic, data traffic, traffic activities, including the all-important access, access by uh, privileged users. So privileged users, and there may be some uh, on the phone or certainly some uh, within your organizations that have those credentials uh, that are able to access directly the database. Uh, many times uh, by accident uh, may cause a problem or remove records, uh, or change the table or something like that that they shouldn't have done. Uh, and Guardian can help you with that as well. Uh, what we also do with Guardian is with vulnerability assessment, we scan for missing patches, misconfigured privileges, and other vulnerabilities in your, in your database. And we automate that whole process of, uh, of the data protection. So. In the right-hand corner of this slide, uh, this is a basic configuration for Guardian. And I'll just take a second to walk you through it. Uh, the uh, left would be your data repositories, which are uh, your data warehouses, databases, uh, et cetera. And uh, if you notice the uh, collector appliance in red, that's basically the Guardian solution. We're depicting it, in this case, as a hardware appliance. Uh, it is a uh, software installed on a server uh, that comes baked together uh, that we ship to you directly. You can also purchase Guardian as a, um, a virtual machine to run on virtual servers without um, this Guardian hardware appliance. Or you can buy the Guardian software and run it on your own um, choice of uh, servers, providing they meet the minimum specifications. But that is the collector, the appliance, as we call it. As you can see, it connects basically between the application servers uh, and the um, databases. But how it does that, you see those two little red dots? Um, those are what we call STAPs. Those are probes that uh, reside uh, on the database server at the OS level and basically capture a mirrored stream of the SQL traffic that's going on, the database traffic from the application servers uh, to the um, databases feeds that back to the appliance uh, and uh, it captures it and based on the policy that you've put in place with the Guardian solution, does a variety of things with that information. We'll talk about that in a little bit more detail in a second. Uh, but that in and of itself is a basic configuration of the Guardian uh, solution. Uh, as I mentioned, uh, the key characteristics are it's a, a single integrated appliance. Uh, it's non-invasive, it's not destructive and it's cross-platform architecture, right? No organization has a single platform, single type of database or flavor uh, that I've experienced anyway, uh, and Guardian supports them all. Uh, dynamically scalable. Uh, for the most part, the solution is put in place uh, at a particular set of database servers that contain sensitive information and is scalable uh, both as the database environment expands, as the organization expands, or as their strategy uh, for data protection expands too. And I'll talk to you in just a second about how it expands and what Guardian looks like in an expanded environment. Uh, it does uh, all kinds of uh, enforcement for DBA access, those privileged users, 
uh, in, as part of the solution uh, guardian model discovers sensitive uh, data uh, resources, uh, detects uh, unauthorized and suspicious activity, and if you so choose the set of policy uh, blocks that uh, level of activity too. Uh, it's very, very granular with real-time policies and what we like to say, it tells you the who, what, when, and how of what's going on uh, between your applications and your databases and gives you 100% visibility, uh, minimal performance impact uh, based on uh, a report that a customer of ours did with a third-party consulting company and they compared the before and after, before they had Guardian in place and after they had Guardian in place. They saw almost a 20% improvement in the resources in their database servers by turning off native logging and implementing Guardian. Uh, we don't rely on logs. There's really no environmental changes at all that are required. And built in the solution, uh, are prepackaged reports, over 200 reports, uh, and in vulnerability assessment there's a knowledge base as well uh, of compliance reports that are geared towards a variety of applications, including comp compliance with Sarbanes-Oxley, PCI, et cetera, and those could be used immediately, basically out of the box to do uh, compliance reporting. And uh, as we've seen over the past several years, uh, the Guardian solution uh, it's mandated that it integrates with security and compliance and your vision of security and compliance too. And I'll talk about that in just a second. So an, in an expanded environment, and it's very common that we are in, in large disparate environments, sometimes uh, worldwide, uh, the way the solution it, it is expandable, uh, if you look on the right side of this uh, chart, uh, is with multiple collectors. Uh, and if you start at the uh, top, we, we do support mainframe um, as well. Um, we support uh, your data centers regardless of where they are with both uh, collectors and the STAP probes. Uh, and, and the beauty of the solution is that it, it allows you to manage all of that environment. As I said, it's dynamically scalable from one location should you choose to manage it from one, one location. So basically, in this scenario uh, depicted here, there's multiple collectors and they're collecting that SQL traffic based on the policy and they're feeding that, SQL, that uh, report back to the centric policy and audit repository that's on the right hand side of, of this chart. Uh, and that's how you manage your system, that's where you may pull all your reports and that's the brains and heart and soul of the, of the Guardian solution. So dynamically scalable, federated with a hierarchy that's very easy uh, and simple uh, to manage regardless of your environment. And of course in the blue on the outside uh, uh, circle and wave so to speak here is some of the environments we, we do support amongst uh, many, many others. So including uh, obviously uh, all of IBM's but um, you know, Oracle, MySQL, SQL Server, Sybase, Teradata, uh, Postgres, SQL, uh, et cetera. And then in version 9, which was released a couple of months ago, Guardian uh, support for big data environments and the only data protection solution that supports them, both uh, Cloudera uh, and IBM uh, Big Insights, uh, obviously Hadoop based. And I'll talk about that just a, in just a second uh, for, a, uh, for a minute or two. So, uh, so Hadoop activity monitoring. Uh, as, as you know, um, and you may know about the uh, history behind Hadoop, uh, but it's become more and more prevalent, especially in, uh, in, in big data environments. We had requests uh, uh, for a, a couple of years now to be able to support it in version 9 we did. Uh, so if you look at the bottom uh, green block on this uh, uh, chart, we're able to help your organization and customer organizations um, overcome the security challenges uh, that are inherent in big data environments. We talked a little bit about those uh, earlier uh, with Guardian version 9. So we monitor and audit. We use that same principle that we've talked about uh, as the baseline for Guardian solution in real time to uh, monitor Hadoop activity, support your compliance requirements, and inherently protect your data with uh, monitoring of HDFS, MapReduce, Hive, and HBase data sources that you may have, 
again, automated, automated compliance control uh, based on the policy that you set in place in the system and uh, you know, really integrates Hadoop into your overall data protection strategy, again, using that philosophy behind Guardian, dynamically scalable uh, and centrally managed. And uh, in version 9.2, a couple of other um, things I just always like to mention. This is uh, support for System I and expanded support for Solaris and some of these other applications, including Oracle eBusiness uh, and um, a uh, updated universal feed, which really opens the infancy of Gridium solution um, to custom applications and some of your niche data sources if those may uh, be of concern to you. That's open protocol, and um, you can develop an interface to it, uh, and again allows you to leverage Guardian for real-time uh, protection, data protection um, in those environments as well. And so, um, you know, we talked about this a little bit. I'll only send a second, uh, spend a second on this uh, slide, but. Uh, you, you're reducing your total cost of ownership in, in large deployments through the integration with your uh, IT and security infrastructure today uh, with automated change management. Uh, in, in the blue block, you'll notice Infrastructure Guardian Grid. That's our uh, approach to dynamically load balancing coverage um, so that uh, you're optimizing the use of the Guardian system in, in large environments. So again, administrative uh, automation and scalability. And so in version 9, we've enhanced a lot of what Guardian does in all of those environments. Uh, and um, it's worthy of note uh, as when we talk about Guardian. And then I uh, talked about this earlier on in terms of the migration of uh, security tools and the, um, the, the importance of both the perimeter strategy, but also perimeter strategy that also provides a perimeter around the databases. But uh, the, the, I always like to note that Guardian integrates with the infrastructure in total for really a seamless uh, uh, operation and, and management. So the arrows on this chart kind of point in a, a variety of different directions, but with full integration, I'll just pick a couple uh, on the right, change ticketing systems uh, with your software development environment, with your storage environment, uh, with your security management platforms, uh, and of course with your security information and event uh, management uh, platforms uh, at the top. Uh, and what we do in, in that regard is that we send alerts uh, in a variety of formats for whatever is required uh, to your SIM. Um, on a uh, real-time basis uh, that, and, and that information integrates into the reporting facility and the alerting facility in, in your SIM. And that SIM could be IBM's Q Radar, ArcSight, RSA, Envision, uh, and um, all of the above and many others as well. So, I'd like to call this the uh, bagel chart and it, it really helps quantify when you think about Guardian and, and if you're uh, new to uh, understanding the Guardian solution, what, what, what Guardian does. And, of course, I'd like to start with the uh, bottom left-hand side, which is uh, Guardian finds and classifies with discover data sources, classifies sensitive data, automates your policy, and automate your compliance reporting. And then uh, we um, assess and harden. We assess database vulnerabilities on the bottom right-hand side, uh, map our predetermined tests to best practices based on STIG, CIS, and some of the other protocols that have been developed by the federal government and elsewhere, monitor your entitlements and alert on configuration changes. Uh, the top left, monitor and audit. We've talked a lot about that throughout this discussion, uh, but of course, detect cyber attacks and application layer for fraud, monitor your privileged users, provide your audit ready uh, activity reports. There's a compliance workflow that's built in and we have a ton of pre-configured policies and reports in the solution that allow you to implement quickly uh, and achieve a, a very quick uh, time to value. And then uh, the top right hand corner, the final part, enforce and protect. And 
um, and so this in and of itself is the full data security compliance lifecycle. And with all of this, uh, Guardium um, helps you uh, achieve it. Uh, these next couple slides, in the interest of time, I'm just going to um, kind of walk through this fairly quickly. Uh, the, 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 I think what's important to notice is we drill down to the next level of Guardian. Uh, there's, there's a lot of value that's inherent um, uh, that's part of the solution that to, we'll just take a second to uh, consider here. Part of the, um, the solution in the bottom left-hand side of that Pago chart that I talked about uh, we find uncatalogued databases and I help you identify uh, sensitive data. What the solution does is crawl the networks uh, to find those instances, uses ag you know, algorithms and alerts and gives you some, based on your policy, some um, response actions that could be undertaken and this chart kind of depicts what, they were, what it found and uh, what the responses were. Uh, the second chart, of course, is reducing the cost of managing user rights. And um, what we do is we provide you sample record of reports once the solution is in place and operational uh, and gives you uh, information on, if you look at the right-hand block, accounts with system privileges, uh, system and admin privileges, object privileges by user, the roles granted, privilege grants, and the execute privileges by uh, procedure. Again. Um, a lot of additional inherent value uh, in the Guardian solution over and above the high-level data protection strategy. When I talk about fine-grained policy with uh, real-time alerts, uh, again, based on your policy and based on what is happening uh, with someone accessing the data, you can get as granular as you want to be able to, number one, uh, once your policy is in place, at a granular level, find out what somebody is doing uh, and or using the data for. Provide you an alert when someone violates that policy, doing something uh, that they shouldn't be doing, they don't have the rights to do for whatever reason, and then alert you on it uh, and, and tell you exactly what they did. And even from there, uh, and we'll talk about this in just a second, uh, you can actually block uh, that transition, uh, that uh, transaction as well with Guardian. Talked about this too, expand fraud identification at the application level. Um, this is an important aspect, especially from an audit perspective, uh, that uh, the application uh, users uh, sometimes use generic service accounts that may happen in your environment, certainly happens in many environments, and they can't tell from an audit perspective that they're using a pooled account who actually is, is do accessing the data. What Guardian does, it tr tracks access to the, uh, the user associated with the sp specific SQL commands uh, and IE identifies who's actually accessing this data regardless of um, uh, the pooled account. And um, what we do with that, we out of the box support it all major enterprise applications in order to do that, including Oracle, EBS, people, Ops, Evil, Business Objects, and Cognos, and some custom applications as well. So uh, provides additional uh, level of auditing and or a direct um, identification of who's accessing, even though they're going through a generic service account, a key attribute of the product. And then uh, the uh, the this has been a, a hot button for many, many years and a key value point of the Guardian solution to this is when, for example, in this scenario, a customer service rep um, is generally authorized and or accesses one record at a time. Um, he's answering a phone call, you know, somebody's complaining about a charge on their credit card, he accesses the record, uh, reviews it with the client and so forth. Uh, what happens if he accesses 99 records or downloads those 99 records um, when he's uh, clearly above policy in that regard? Uh, what did he do? Why did he do it? What did he see? Guardian allows you uh, to note all of that, alert on all of that, and also block on all of that. And with blocking, as I mentioned, uh, basically in real time. 
And so uh, if your policy says this customer service record, can, the rep can access four records and the access is 99 uh, through the workflow in the solution. Once you set the policy up that way as part of the solution, boom, block that transaction, done. Alert and block, and then you can respond accordingly. Uh, and again, with blocking as part of the solution, there's no database changes required, no changes to the applications, nothing in the network needs to be touched. Uh, uh, and um, this is with the enhanced uh, performance of Guardian so that you don't have to risk a inline database firewall in place slowing down your system, especially in large transaction networks. That's the last thing you want. Guardian does it without that. And then uh, quickly, uh, we talked about the um, integration from Guardian uh, with other tools and uh, from a uh, database protection strategy, the, the, the part of uh, IBM security uh, intelligence portfolio is QRadar, which is uh, IBM's uh, uh, SIM. Um, and uh, Guardian integrates uh, completely, fully into uh, the QRadar portfolio and so provides with your QRadar or any SIM, as I talked about earlier, a um, security insight as it relates to the to the database. So um, from an automation perspective, um, with your full automation with the Guardian solution, uh, we help you ensure compliance and thereby uh, reducing operational costs. And I'm going to quickly just kind of uh, walk through these next few and then get to the uh, use cases in the interest of time, so please bear with me. Uh, and um, this last chart, or this chart here, talks um, about the uh, sign-offs and escalation for compliance. As you may very well know, uh, in your strategy, it's one thing to monitor uh, and uh, report and enforce, but it's another thing as a mandate in most cases. If they have uh, reporting as part of the solution, and uh, from a compliance perspective, many times it's mandated in a workflow that's behind it. And basically, Guardian uh, inherent in the solution is the reporting, but also a workflow that distributes those reports uh, through uh, the organization that should be distributed to, again, based on your policy and requires a sign off. So that uh, you can check that, uh, in this case, Mark Gamash viewed the uh, report on uh, uh, change management uh, in databases, but didn't sign it, and others that get it and did sign it, so that you can, again, know what's going on, know that people in your organization saw what they needed to see, reviewed it, and responded to it accordingly, number one. And number two, from an audit, audit perspective, uh, this is a mandate uh, and helps uh, alleviate the pain many times of uh, trying to demonstrate uh, that you had a workflow and sign off in place uh, for your database auditing solution. Uh, quickly on the uh, vulnerability and configuration assessment architecture, uh, basically, uh, if you're familiar with uh, uh, the STIG and uh, DISA uh, and federal government benchmarks, the Guardian vulnerability assessment tool is based on those benchmarks. And um, what it does is it basically ensures uh, coverage of database settings, operating system, and observed behavior, runs tests on permission roles, configurations, uh, versions, and your um, custom tests, uh, and assesses your configuration files and your environmental variables and your registry settings. And basically, in a nutshell, uh, that's the vulnerability uh, and configuration assessment tool uh, that's part of the Guardian solution. Uh, and uh, in version 9, uh, support for SCAP reporting as well as part of our uh, vulnerability assessment tool. And you can see the stamps of approval here uh, from uh, organizations, uh, including NISTI uh, and uh, the Department of Commerce um, uh, regarding Guardian's uh, compliance and or um, the ability to uh, uh, provide a solution that complies with uh, with those particular mandates. So. And then uh, I'd like to spend just a few minutes talking about use cases. And I, again, I think we've got uh, a good example of a several vertical markets here, and I tried to address a few of those uh, with uh, with the use cases as part of the discussion here today. Um, in this case, and, and again, um, I'll 
kind of point to uh, three organizations, both large and small, uh, just so that you, you can understand that the solution is, uh, again, dynamically scalable, but fits to many different types of environments. Uh, in this case, a large regional bank, uh, and what they do is they monitor Davis activity from, uh, from a compliance and an audit perspective. Uh, they uh, were mandated to prevent users from accessing uh, enterprise data. Uh, they um, have a um, large financial store of information, but also uh, a credit card business as well. Uh, they were a public company. They wanted to demonstrate their compliance with Sarbanes-Oxley as well as PCI, the payment card industry standards. What they did uh, is implement Guardian. Uh, to monitor their end user and privilege access across uh, DB2, Oracle, uh, MySQL, you can see the list here. Uh, and um, they effectively monitor now 800 branches of their organization uh, and um, able to comply with their audit regulations, preventing fraud, uh, and, um, and they support inherently data governance, governance by uh, preventing any authorized changes to critical databases. Uh, the quote from their um, senior DBA, the VP of um, uh, database infrastructure, he said, Guardian, monitoring database activity with IBM Guardian, helping us support compliance with our privacy and audit requirements without impacting database performance. Again, a key. A large pharmaceutical retailer. Uh, they have uh, 6,000 stores, I believe, at last count. Uh, and I know you're probably very, very familiar with them. Uh, they're um, a longtime Guardian customer, and uh, they had five major data centers, and uh, they had been uh, having problems with PCI compliance uh, on several different occasions. This goes back uh, uh, several years ago. Uh, they're a large public company as well. Their auditors were mandating uh, stronger controls about the database, and they also wanted to um, uh, comply with SAS 70. Uh, and uh, implemented Guardian. Uh, they, again, after implementing Guardian, became certified uh, as compliant uh, by the um, auditors on, on PCI. I have done that in less uh, than four weeks. Saved themselves a ton of money, millions of dollars, that they would have been penalized for not being uh, compliant. Uh, and, um, you know, maintain their security. And they, um, because of the disparate environment and their large data centers, they optimize the uh, use of the Guardian grid, um, and uh, using Guardian been able to really optimize their whole system performance around the database, around their databases. So, uh, and uh, very, very pleased with the system. You can see the, the uh, quote from uh, their um, uh, CISO at uh, this large uh, pharmaceutical uh, retailer. And then an online uh, services, uh, financial services organization, a large online financial services organization. Again, uh, they had two phases of this project. Uh, they wanted to monitor privilege user activities, especially around database changes, uh, and uh, they wanted to protect customer privacy. This was going on, and in, in the background were several large data breach, breaches at financial organizations, and they were they had a proactive strategy in place at this particular one. Uh, that, uh, it, that led them to Guardian, and upon our implementation, they were um, um, protecting uh, and managing 75 in-house application, uh, 122 database instances across 100 plus servers, and again a disparate environment, including Oracle, IBM DB2, Sybase, and so forth. Leveraging the automated auditing and reporting. Uh, they had daily audit reporting compliance of Sarbanes Oxley, so those workflow and those reports they circulated daily um, as a uh, mandate by their auditor, and um, and they uh, were able to monitor how all their data is handled to prevent the mishandling of uh, uh, client confidential information and transaction information too. And in this particular case, uh, coincidentally, uh, they um, have. Uh, Guardian database activity monitoring, vulnerability assessment, and this is a data center environment that's also managed by, ironically, IBM uh, Global Services. So, so uh, the the solution is uh, chosen by um, organizations worldwide, and we talk the tops, right? Five to five top banks, four to four global managed healthcare providers, large retailers, uh, large insurers. Uh, 
telco companies, the most recognized name in PCs, uh, that being Dell, and large government agencies in the United States and worldwide uh, have chosen uh, Infosphere Guardian. But more importantly, uh, there's a whole tier of customers with some databases that can contain uh, important information to them of many sizes. And many times those uh, implementations could be just one appliance on a small database environment like I talked about earlier in the presentation. So while you know this slide talks about uh, how pervasive uh, in large uh, Guardian's footprint is, as I said, there's over 600 customers of various sizes that have implemented Guardian um, for uh, their particular data protection requirements. And so the solution infinitely scalable from the small, from smallest of environments to the uh, largest of environments. From a leadership perspective, uh, the Forrester Wave uh, been tracking this space uh, for a long, long time. And since they started tracking it five years ago, uh, Guardians received the highest ranking all the time. If you're familiar with the Wave, it's the top right-hand corner that's uh, the optimum position. And that's where Guardian has been. Uh, back when Guardian was a private organization and maintained that presence uh, since we've become uh, uh, IBM, so, which is three years ago, um, actually this month. So. And then, you know, the evaluation process that Forrester employs and so forth. And uh, one of the keys to the successful partnership between IBM and Guardian was the ability to allow Guardian to continue to focus on innovation helped us uh, really validate and move forward from a leadership perspective. We talked about support of big data uh, in version 9 of the solution and some of the other large enhancements. Uh, and um, one of the things that uh, uh, Forrester had said, IBM's acquisition of Guardian in 2009 changed everything. And IBM being a leading, leading player now in uh, security and uh, specifically when we talk about Guardian, uh, database security. So in summary, uh, the uh, again, we all agree, I hope it's critical to secure high value data and validate your compliance. And many times traditional log management and SIM and some of the other protection strategies you may have, um, have in place are only part of the solution. And um, our InfoSec writing is the most widely deployed solution in the world uh, with the ongoing feedback and the benefit of that feedback from the most demanding, demanding data center environments worldwide. Scalability, scalability, heterogeneous support, that complete visibility and granular, granular control of what's going on. The deep automation that uh, reduces the workload and helps uh, from a total cost of ownership perspective and truly helps you uh, provide a holistic approach uh, in your environment to security and compliance. So with that, uh, my 35 minutes turned into uh, 50 minutes or so, but I, but um, I, we're going to turn over to uh, have some questions uh, and answers here, and I'm happy to do so. But most of all, I've been, since I've been speaking for the past 45 or 50 minutes, I want to thank you all uh, for listening. We went through a lot of uh, discussion well, points. And I hope I communicated a lot to you. So, and uh, Ray, I think, uh, or uh, I think I'm turning it back over to Ray for a second. Yeah, and and Paul, thank you. We uh, we didn't want to stop you. You were hitting on uh, everything that we wanted to get covered. So we're we're actually uh, it, it was a treat to have you go a little longer than expected. And I know Jack, uh, uh, he may have a few questions uh, that that uh, he wanted to pose. And uh, if anyone in the audience uh, attendees would like to pose some questions, now's a great time to do that. We have just a couple minutes left. But uh, Jack is uh, a channel partner manager with us here at Extivia. And Jack, I'm going to ask you to jump in here and, and uh, take us home. You bet. Yeah, hey, so yeah, this is Jack Dotson with Extivia. Uh, and um, uh, Paul, you know, I was wondering, uh, while, you were, while you were talking, uh, this sounds like something that uh, is is it possible for somebody? How quickly can somebody jump in uh, whose house is on fire and get this up and going? Uh, you have kind of a, a general. I mean, is it something that somebody has to get a lot of training on, or, or can you kind of speak to that? Jack, that's a that's a, that's a great question. In, in a nutshell, uh, the, one of the the uh, 
I think things that led us to uh, become the company uh, we became was the ability to respond quickly, especially if the building was on fire, uh, by deploying a solution uh, rapidly, regardless if it was hardware-based or, or software-based, in order to A, remediate a breach, or B, uh, comply with an audit, um, or C, whatever it may be. Uh, the solution, again, is um, from, from a uh, turnaround time perspective is very, very easy to deploy once you place the order. Uh, and the, uh, as I think I talked about a little bit, uh, and certainly when you see a demo in depth, you'll see the, um, the infinite um, quick turnaround that it will take you to implement the Guardian solution. Uh, with the pre-canned reports uh, and the, um, the, the workflow and the graphical inter interface that's in the, in the solution, it's very quick and easy. We've had some monumental implementations in a rather short period of time, and we've had some um, basic implementations into smaller environments in a matter of days. And from a, a user perspective and the usability of the solution has been drastically enhanced over the nine versions. So from an operational perspective, a user, an end user, or an implementer in a customer environment uh, certainly can implement very, very quickly. Very good. And uh, apart from other than like these homegrown solutions you were talking about earlier, is there anybody else out there that, uh, what other solutions are out there that maybe that may cover this that uh, our customers or other folks may have heard about? Yeah, so there's, there's um, you know, that's a great question. I'm not bashful. We'll talk about it. There's, all this, there's, a, there's a few uh, vendors out there that have a similar type of solution, uh, including companies like Oracle uh, and, um, and, and companies like Incriva. Uh, and um, again, from an overall data protection strategy, encourage the scrutiny um, and the comparison between uh, Guardian and Oracle uh, Audit Vault, or Guardian and Imperva, or Guardian and AppSec, and you'll see the true benefit of the solution. There are some inherent differences uh, between the solutions, uh, and some of those solutions rely on native uh, logging to be turned on, again, violating the principle of real-time data security uh, in that regard. And if indeed someone is looking at the marketplace and wants to look at multiple solutions, one of the things that I would encourage is number one, a demo from Guardian, number two, a uh, POC of Guardian in a comparison environment, and number three, as I mentioned, we've got 600 plus uh, customers of various sizes using Guardian. We are always happy to uh, to have those, and those customers are always happy, uh, especially the members of the Customer Advisory Board, to talk to customers uh, our prospects that are looking at other solutions. Right. And uh, the other thing I was kind of wondering is, you know, obviously you've been, uh, Guardian's been with IBM now for the last uh, three years, I think you said. Uh, what do you see uh, Guardian looking to do next, especially in the framework of IBM? Yes, yeah, so I, I, that's a great question. I think the, uh, the version 9 and the support of uh, Hadoop uh, big insights, especially with IBM, is, uh, was a significant milestone in that regard. Uh, and then I think you'll see further enhancements, uh, further platform growth, and then in the, in the next generation of products, uh, uh, some pretty unique aspects of, uh, of uh, how to approach data security that are real significant uh, um, additions. And, and we've got, uh, I always like to plug our uh, CTO, Guardian, who's a vice president of, um, of, and a distinguished engineer now at IBM. He really was the heart and soul of the, of the Guardian solution. He, he's thought outside the box um, and uh, always has, and hence uh, the product as it sits today. Uh, but he's got some real neat stuff um, uh, in, in the roadmap in the future. And, and one of the other things I always like to mention when I hear this question, is that this version 9 reflects a lot of customer input over the past uh, 11 years in Guardian. And we have a customer advisory board, we have a users group, and the customers that have implemented the solution uh, have really helped shape the future of all versions of Guardian, more specifically version 9. And, and if um, we have prospects on the phone that, that implement Guardian, you'll get a chance to say uh, in 
future versions, wouldn't it be great if it supported this? Wouldn't it be wonderful if it supported that? But, but again, and more integration, by the way, with the IBM security uh, uh, framework as well as part of security intelligence, too. Hey, Paul and Jack, we, we've hit the top of the hour, but we did have a, a question come in from an attendee, and I, if we have a minute, I, I feel like this might open up a, a, a larger topic, but I wonder if we can an, provide a quick answer. The question is, how does Guardium handle encrypted data? Sure. So, so the, the philosophically from a, a um, um, total security compliance, encryption is an important aspect of, of a lot of what uh, goes on in customer environments, certainly from a PCI perspective. So how Guardian integrates and where we connect uh, from an, a, um, if you remember the STAP probe uh, that resides at the operating level of the database. So uh, we're able to work in an encrypted environment because at that level, that SQL traffic is not encrypted, and um, and and that's how we work uh, in in those environments. So and again, we're capturing the SQL traffic um, in 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 the environment, you know, and and monitoring that, storing that in the data in the audit repository, not uh, the actual data. Okay, great. Paul, um, I, I think we could probably go on another hour or two, um, but uh, in the interest of everyone's time and honoring the commitment they made to, to, to this hour, I want to go ahead and wrap up here. And Paul, we want to thank you not only for your time today, but just for the, the, this partnership, and we're eager to see where it, uh, where it goes as, as we continue to work together. Um, thank you for your time today. We, we sure appreciate it. Thank you, Ray. It's a pleasure again, and I look forward to great things with Extivia and look forward to future discussions with yourself, uh, the Extivia organization, but also uh, customers that were uh, prospects that were part of this uh, meeting today. So thank, I thank you and Jack and the entire organization and those attendees today as well. So. Great. And for any attendees, if you have uh, questions or if you'd like to discuss any of the topics covered today or any of our other services, uh, we'd be glad to address those uh, probably the easiest thing to do would be to visit extivia.com, go to the contact page. You can also uh, follow us on Twitter and Facebook where we will post the notification that, today, that today's uh, recording of the webinar is available. And we are uh, also grateful for you uh, attending today, and we'll keep you posted about upcoming webinars as well. Thank you all for your attendance, and we'll see you next time. Muted.